Hi, I'm Rajshri, and I've been um, hallucinating type for the past few months. <laughs> By that, I mean I'm experimenting with typography and augmented reality. Before I get to that, my um, research statement is how can I use the grid in, an AR, uh, in AR to explore embodied spatial design? Stay with me, I'll explain. The grid is a tool in graphic design used to organize complex information. On your right are a few examples of what a grid can look like. In fact, this book was made using a grid. So are my slides. Um, a, uh, augmented reality is when you place virtual elements in a real physical environment. Embodied spatial design is when you design keeping in mind the human who has to experience it. So the different considerations you'd need to make about the color, typography, material, etc. Um, why? So I've been creating type AR experiences for my 100 days class. Why typography? No reason, I just love it. Um, anyway, while I was making these, I couldn't stop thinking about the point of it. Why was I doing it? Yes, yes, it's pretty, like, but so what? <laughs> like, is, is it all just for the visual theater? I couldn't, uh, like, stop asking myself, like, can I go beyond the spectacle of AR? Can I use AR for designing more complex information, for communication, for storytelling? Not in a way that looks like a 2D poster in a 3D environment, right? Like, why was it so complicated? Because um, as designers, we're used to thinking about the environment while designing for print. Like, is it going to be a poster on the wall or a flyer that a person's going to be holding or a billboard on the highway? You'd, everything would be designed differently even though they have to convey the same information. And the device is important for digital design, right? Like, AR, we have to combine the two because the people would be looking at the world through a device in a physical space. Not to mention you need social considerations if you want them to interact with it physically. And this makes the whole thing uh, a little complicated and not very responsive. Each space requires different consideration in terms of the size, the layout, the material, the interaction, the animation. And it's too huge of a task for me to have done alone <laughs> in three months. So I thought I'd just like pick the size and the layout. Hence the grid. Um, let's talk about the tech. I started measuring any detected surfaces, then I decided to hard code everything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and focus more on explaining uh, or exploring spatial grid design, which was a task in itself. But before I did that, I needed to know how to design anything in AR. Like, how do you do that? Um, I used my 100 days as a space for design, design research. 57, if I'm being honest, <laughs> I'll finish it. Yes. <laughs> they all started as um, posters, so I translated the 2D grid on a poster into a spatial grid to create an AR experience. For example, this poster has a fairly simple 2D grid. In um, 3D, the grid would look something like this and the final output would look something like this, and the AR experience would look something like this. Um, while doing these, I took notes, and I can share some of it with you. So one thing I learned was it's more immersive when you force the viewer to move through your experience. Animation in AR discourages movement, like people just wanna stand and look at it. If you're going outside, you wanna go big with type because small text is not visible, that's just too much visual clutter. If you have to use small text, make sure it's face up because the floor has, tends to be less visually cluttered. I learned that you can't really embarrass yourself at Washington Square, <laughs> even if you're chasing <laughs> giant naked butts. <laughs> uh, I learned don't replicate what's on the image anchor, add to it. Um, we don't have enough blues and purples, which is why AR in blues and purples really stand out outside. Um, but most importantly, this lesson that I learned was don't tell your parents about your art account. It takes you places and you'd rather not have that conversation. <laughs> so with all that, I mean, 
yeah, these experiments were all based on posters, but these posters aren't really examples of an exceptional use of the grid. But you know what is this poster? Uh, this poster was designed by Paula Shore for the Public Theater in 1995. For those of you who don't know who she is, she's God. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> she's an iconic graphic designer known for her work in typography and dynamic branding. Check her out. Um, I recreated this poster in different spaces, keeping in mind the human who'd be viewing it. Um, so, story time. Um, imagine is the year 2025 and everybody's looking like an idiot with an AR head mounted display glass. <laughs> You're walking down the road and you see this poster. Your device spatializes it for you and what you see in front of you is the shit. Okay, you like it, you read it, it's great, but you're running late, you need to go home. So you take the poster home. Now you're not broke. You just live in New York, so your apartment is the size of a closet. <laughs> you don't have enough space to walk through the experience. The exp all you have is a table. You can walk around the poster. Now to read it, it's arranged itself in a way that you can read it. You take your time, you like something, you're like, great, I need to show it to my friend. The next day, you take it to Washington Square to show it to your friend. The both of you are like walking around, looking at it. Great, your friend likes something else. You're like, huh, we need a tiebreaker. So you decide to show it to your crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, all you have is the tiny coding lack table. It's more concise, it's still circular, but again, you can read it from the outside. You guys still, you're not sure what you want to see, but you decide to go for the thing anyway. Now, on the day of the play, you go to the public theater, you're like, fine, let's take the poster out, make sure we made the right decision, mm, whatever. And then <laughs> you decide to go for this musical. That's the end of the story. <coughs> anyway, coming back to this, the grid in AR with more and more. And more. <laughs> I, st <laughs> I started with a plan of the space, got the x and the y axis, and then imagined the elevation, which is the z axis and then designed for the layout for a human to view it in that case. Um, in this case, it was a park. It was kind of designed like a playground. And then I thought, like, no reason the z-axis had to be like that, right? Like, we're so conditioned to a cube because of, the, because of the page. Like, why couldn't it be this? I actually preferred walking through this one because it was less invasive, even though this looked less visually appealing. Um, but it was just me. Um, on the table, this was the first iteration that I made. The second one that I thought was um, kind of a slanted one. I thought I also thought this one worked better because everything slanted away from the camera and not towards it. Um, for the Washington Square, nobody wants to go a full 360 to read a poster. I'm sorry, like nobody's going to do that. But if you have to, if you absolutely need to. Every, the words would be facing inward so that I, the viewer just has to turn and not like move physically a 360 degree. Um, for the table, because the trapezium worked so well, I thought a cone would work well too because everything would be slanting towards it. Another iteration that I tried was a semicircle. It didn't work quite well because things were bulging towards the camera and like I just have to like step back and see things. Um, for the public theater, for sidewalks in general, I thought it was easier to have the midway clear so that you don't like bump into people and like get screamed at. <laughs> anyway, another iteration for this was this. I really loved how this one turned out, but this particular sidewalk was too narrow. I think like a, a slightly broader one would have worked better with this. Um, so yeah, I explored this one poster in different ways spatially, but there are a million reasons I shouldn't have picked this poster, as I won't get into it, otherwise I'll start crying. Uh, <laughs> next steps would be to consolidate the notes. Um, probably tech, like make it actually respond to the space. Um, I also want to like move away from the traditional X and the Y and like look at spaces that would like provide for a more unique elevation or use the facades of a building as a grid. For example, this church, 
like it would make for such an interesting grid right like now imagine a pro choice poster on this church <laughs> like <laughs> it would be amazing <laughs> anyway i want to thank everybody um. <laughs>